After eight days of exhausting top-level talks, Iran and six world nations signed the outline of an agreement to allow Tehran to shake off Western sanctions, this in return for limiting its nuclear program. And Barack Obama hailed the Iran deal as making the world a safer place. However, the U.S. Congress is threatening to prevent the agreement from being implemented. A large-scale search is underway for 13 sailors still missing after a Russian trawler sank in the country's Far East. And here on RT International, we speak with some of the relatives of the survivors. And graphic TV advertisements condemning the use of drone strikes popping up across America. The big surprise, though, they're all funded by military veterans. Twelve o'clock noon on Friday. This is RT International, live from Moscow. From me, Rory Suchet, and the entire news team, here come your headlines. A deal on Iran's nuclear program has been sealed in Switzerland. The preliminary agreement came two days late, but the relief that something had been achieved was certainly clear among those who participated. All right, here are some of the things Tehran is obliged to do to ensure its nuclear program is peaceful. It is the foundation for a deal that will see Iran reduce its stockpile of enriched uranium by 98 percent for 15 years. It is a deal in which Iran will cut its installed centrifuges by more than two-thirds for 10 years. So Iran has agreed that for the next 10 years, it will only enrich uranium at just one facility in Natanz. For 15 years, it will not enrich uranium at levels beyond 3.67 percent, making it insufficient for a bomb, but useful for nuclear energy purposes. It signed up to international inspections and pledged to redesign its Arak facility and stop nuclear work at its secretive Fordov reactor for 15 years. It will, however, look to enter the global nuclear fuel market and sell its enriched uranium. Of course, Iran had no intention of leaving the talks in Switzerland empty-handed. Here's what Western powers have agreed to do in return for Tehran's cooperation. The European Union will terminate the implementation of all nuclear-related economic and financial sanctions, and the United States will cease the application of all nuclear-related secondary economic and financial sanctions simultaneously with the IAE verified implementation by Iran of its key nuclear commitments. Despite the agreement that has been made, skepticism remains over whether it can work. As our correspondent Daniel Bushell now reports. From the outset, it looks like a solution for both sides with a degree of detail that wasn't expected. Many predicted just a statement of intentions here. Some commentators now calling it, quote, a surprisingly specific and comprehensive understanding. But there is still a lot of hard bargaining to be done. And as we say, the devil is in the details. Negotiators now have till June the 30th to hammer out a final deal, uh, including how Iran's compliance will be verified. Under the framework IAEA inspectors, will be allowed to check every Iranian nuclear facility, which is more powers than it's usually given. And it leaves some in Tehran fearful that it will be used as an excuse to never properly remove all international sanctions against the country. As for the hailed rapprochement between the United States and Iran, Iran's foreign minister was careful in his words, saying, quote, Iran-U.S. relations have nothing to do with this. This was an attempt to resolve the nuclear issue. We have serious differences with the United United States. He added the two should melt away their distrust as Iran shows that it's carrying out its side of the bargain. Uh, however, for that to succeed, it will have to survive attacks from hardliners in both the United States and Iran who want this deal to fail. Iranian's leader Hassan Rouhani welcomed the outcome, but it's on the nation's streets where the agreement received its warmest, warmest reception. Uh, people actually pouring out onto the streets to celebrate. <laughs> Some other Iranians, however, stayed home to welcome the deal in a different way. Uh, 
When Obama's address of the progress of talks was broadcast on Iranian television, a somewhat rare sight for the country, as some viewers started to take selfies in front of their tellies. The photos then widely distributed on social media to show thanks for U.S. cooperation during the talks. However, not everybody was happy. Israel's prime minister released a statement saying the deal threatens the survival of Israel and puts the entire region at risk of war. And during the entire course of the talks, Benjamin Netanyahu made his position very clear. The concessions offered to Iran in Lausanne would ensure a bad deal that would endanger Israel, the Middle East, and the peace of the world. Now is the time for the international community to insist on a better deal. And it's not only Israel that thinks the deal is flawed. There's staunch opposition at the very heart of Washington as well. Even though President Obama uh, has welcomed the deal, Gaine Chichikan now explains. Well, President Obama addressed the critics of this deal, saying it is the best option there is because the military option will not stop Iran's nuclear program. If, in fact, Prime Minister Netanyahu is looking for the most effective way to ensure Iran doesn't get a nuclear weapon, this is the best option. And I believe our nuclear experts can confirm that. We know that the deal will envision the relief of all nuclear-related sanctions by the European Union and the United States. The U.S. Congress is finding this difficult to accept. U.S. lawmakers have worked so hard to impose those sanctions. They've been ready to impose more sanctions regardless of how these negotiations went. Fifty-four senators signed a letter to the Iranian Supreme Leader saying whatever the Obama administration agrees on can be overturned by the U.S. Congress, basically saying do not trust the U.S. government in these negotiations. President Obama said he was embarrassed by how U.S. lawmakers could try to undermine a major international effort like this. Remember, the deal is still being negotiated. It hasn't been finalized. It is expected to be finalized at the end of June. The U.S. Congress can still find a way to undermine it. Following President Obama's statement on the deal, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee said they will move ahead with the legislation that requires congressional approval of any Iran nuclear deal before sanctions on Iran would be waived or suspended by the president. He said the committee would vote on this legislation on April 14th. How this vote could affect the negotiations is difficult to tell. We are watching all the opinions and follow-ups of the agreement sealed in Switzerland. We're doing it on air and online. RT.com.